All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Awaken to Happiness Now Global Series. Thank you so much for being here with us today. If you are new to me, new to my channel on YouTube, please do subscribe and join so that you can watch all of the current shows, all of the previous shows. It's my deepest wish, desire, and intention to bring forward to you, for you, these wonderful speakers who are sharing their gifts, their teachings, their wisdom, their experiences, their activations and healings and clearings so that we can all thrive in our lives, right? So please do subscribe. And so today we have a new speaker on the show, first time. So Jennifer Nieto is here with us and we're going to be talking about inner child healing. And so some of what we're going to talk about today and experience actually is uh, we're going to do an inner child opening meditation. It'll be a opening uh, meditation and grounding process. We're going to be talking about why uh, life experience, like Jennifer's life experiences and her energy work trainings. We're going to talk about what the inner child is and why it's important to heal the inner child. The chakras that are impacted by childhood trauma, how to tell if your inner child is wounded. We're going to talk about the CAS method for inner child healing or CASS method, um, how to connect and heal your inner child. We're going to be doing a connect your inner child meditation and a closing group healing meditation as well, right? So uh, stay tuned for all of that. I'm, I'm excited because it's always, you know, whenever there's a new guest on the show, it's always something brand new. The energy is different. Everything is new. So I'm excited. So for those of you who may not know Jennifer, she is an empathic, intuitive life coach and energy healing practitioner. She has a master's degree in psychology, marriage and family therapy. She is a credentialed school counselor and is trained as a trauma specialist. She has worked with all ages from child from children to adults. Over 20 years, Jennifer is certified in energy psychology as well as energy medicine healing modalities such as EFT, TFT, NLP, Reiki Master Teacher, Int Integrative Chakra Therapy, Bach Flower Remedy, Re Remedies, sorry, Sound Healing, and Quantum Touch to bring harmony and balance for your soul's rebirth. Jennifer also uses tarot and oracle cards for intuitive readings as a divination tool. And Jennifer is really passionate about helping people, especially empaths and sensitives, release emotional pain, anxiety, and trauma through inner child healing, along with the other energetic healing modalities. So I'm excited uh, about this conversation, this show today with Jennifer. So please join me in welcoming Jennifer to the show. Jennifer, welcome. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. It's truly lovely to be part of your community and I really look forward to speaking to you all about a topic that I'm really passionate about, which is inner child healing. As a matter of fact, I even brought a picture of myself at the age of four, so you could see my big, happy, goofy smile and my magic bubbles here, because we will be using those later on in, the, in today's talk. But I invite all of you now to realize that you do have an inner child within you that wants to come out and play. And so I ask you to open your heart and really start connecting with your inner child now. And I just wanted to share with you just a little bit before we go into the grounding meditation that personally for me, coming to the realization that I was an empath and healing my inner child is what helped me to heal on all levels of my being. And what I mean by that is emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually. And prior to that, I had experienced a lot of childhood traumas, right? And though all of that, um, all of those traumas, I guess we would say, is what resulted in me having health issues throughout my life. And doctors were diagnosing me now with different ailments like chronic fatigue syndrome, adrenal insufficiency, uh, multiple autoimmune issues, digestive issues. But at one point it got so severe that I wasn't able to walk or stand without being in complete pain. And MRIs were confirming now that I had uh, spinal disc degeneration. So as you can imagine, all of this drained me emotionally, physically, and mentally, and eventually my health declined to the point where I had no choice but to stop and heal. What I always tell people is like, my body just crashed. And it really took time uh, for me to start working on healing my inner child and to address the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual, and the physical aspects, all of those things that were causing what we say is dis-ease within my body. And now today, I just want to share with you that, you know, I no longer have those ailments. I can walk for miles at a time with no discomfort. I can now play with my nieces and nephews. And I truly feel like I'm living life again, right? The way that I want it to live it. And so I'm sharing this with you because if any of you are going through similar experiences, I just want you to know that you truly can heal yourself. 
And I know professionally, I've seen over and over how doing inner child work with my clients has really helped them to have more compassion for their soul's journey and really give them a deeper sense of self-love and self-acceptance and inner peace um, that they haven't really experienced with any type of therapy that they've been in before. But before, like I said, I go too deep into my healing journey, because I will be sharing with you some of my childhood experiences, I know that that can be triggering. And so I would like to take all of you now just through a short grounding meditation to help you feel safe and connected and grounded in this moment. So if that's okay with you, Alara, we'll go ahead and go into that. So absolutely. If, yeah. Yeah. So if everyone's willing, I invite you to go ahead and close your eyes if you feel safe. And then I want you to take a few deep cleansing breaths in through your nose. And just hold it for a second and then breathe out through your mouth. You really want to extend your exhale to really calm down your nervous system. So once again, take another deep breath in through your nose. Hold and then out through your mouth. And then I want you to let that little five-year-old inside of you come out and play. When you were five years old, all they needed was their own imagination. There is absolutely no efforting. It just naturally came to them. And I invite you to let that little five-year-old out for every process that we do today. Really just surrender to it and be in the flow. Now I want you just to go ahead and imagine, or you could sense or feel that everyone here on this live and everyone listening on the replay is now in a beautiful healing energy vortex of rainbow light. And in this vortex of rainbow light, we're gonna declare this as a space of magic and miracles, right? A space for healing on an emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual level. And I invite you to call in your divine spiritual team, right? To help assist all of us today in dissolving any unconscious energetic blocks, and programming from your ancestors, from society, from your family, and from your childhood, right? And as they're starting to do this, I want you to imagine that the beautiful energies of the rainbow light are now gonna replace all these old limiting beliefs with wisdom, concepts, skills, and abilities from your divine self. And then imagine now that you're gonna connect with the universal energies that are above you and to earth energies that are below you. And they're gonna to start to enter into this beautiful healing vortex of rainbow light, really allowing you now to feel connected and grounded and protected in this moment. And as the earth and universal energies embrace you, I want you to imagine now that a beautiful rainbow light bubble starts to form around you. And then your divine self is going to enhance these energies and fill you up and nourish you now, allowing you to feel more love and more healing. And then from this place, I want you to imagine that a beautiful infinity eight symbol starts to form that's going to connect from the light of your heart to the light of everybody here on this call. And together, we're going to create and magnify this space for healing with compassion. And then if you're willing, I invite you to put your hands over your heart and really give yourself some gratitude for showing up today, for allowing yourself to heal on a really deep level. Really open up your heart to feel the love that's already inside of you and the love that's all around you. Really tune in and feel your own divinity. And then go ahead and take another deep cleansing breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And when you're ready with no rush, you can open your eyes and come back to me. How was that, Alora? That's so good. Thank you. I I can barely open my eyes. Everything is so bright now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But honestly, it's like it's like so bright. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, that's yeah, it's like my whole, my whole vision has changed, you know? Perfect. That's what we want, right? That's the inner child part of you that's ready to come out and play and just to be here in this big unity energy vortex. Awesome. Thank you. So, so uh, yeah, I feel so much better. Thank you. Thank, thank you. 
So let's talk a little bit about, you know, because it's the first time that you're here on our show. If you could just share a little mm -hmm. bit about your journey, you know, uh, into being or becoming a healer, uh, working with these energy modalities. And I just want to say really quickly before we go further, um, when we're talking about healing, we are talking about energy healing. We're talking about emotions, etc. cetera. Um, we're not medical practitioners. I'm not a medical practitioner. I don't think Jennifer is either. So we're not talking about anything like, like that, healing right. physically in that way. And if you do have any um, major emotional issues, challenges, please do see a certified practitioner as well. Okay. So you are in charge of your healing journey. We are here to provide some information and give you some awarenesses and help you to experience today in, in this case, your inner child. Okay. So if you have anything more serious, please do contact uh, your medical practitioner, okay? All right, so let's talk about your journey because we, we talked a little bit about it last week when we were meeting and um, you know we've all had different challenges in our lives, right? But you've obviously overcome a lot of them. You've done a lot of work, inner work, you've done a lot of healing, et cetera. And now you're working with you know people to help them heal themselves, right? So let's, uh, yeah, if you could just share a little bit about your journey, that would be great, just so we can get to know who you are. Yes, definitely. So since we're talking about inner child healing, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of start at the beginning. So since I was a child, I knew I was different, right? I was very energetically sensitive, and I really started to believe that my sensitivity was something to be ashamed of, especially since nobody in my family was like me. As a matter of fact, I didn't even really look like them. So when my parents divorced, people who knew my mother would tell me like, oh, you must look like your father. And people who knew my father would tell me, oh, you must look like your mother. Now to a child, that can be kind of confusing. And it just kind of left me feeling a little bit alone and isolated and a sense that I didn't belong. And then later in life, I found out I was an empath. And that's what really helped me to understand my own sensitivity, even going back to being a child, right? And for those of you who don't know what an empath is, it's just someone who can tune into the energies and emotions of people, places, pets, the collective. Not only do we tune into them, right? We tend to feel them energetically in our bodies. But as a child, all I knew is that I had this like really big heart and I wanted to share my love with everybody, but then I could also feel the pain and suffering in the world. And so it just left me feeling really overwhelmed and confused. And then on top of being empathic, I also experienced significant childhood traumas. So when I say that, I mean mentally, emotionally, physically, and even sexually. And it did involve the people closest to me, right? And all of this was happening at a really young age. And so it really left me with that feeling like I was damaged or I was broken or once again, that there was something really wrong with me. And then being the empath that I was, I felt all of these experiences so intensely to be honest, it really felt like they were magnified a hundred times over. So over time, you can imagine that I now feel scared and terrified and I began to live in fear of the world. And to make things even more terrifying at the time was Richard Ramirez and he was the Night Stalker. And I don't know if you're familiar with that, but he was actually kidnapping little girls from their bedrooms. And so I was so terrified that I would be the next little girl that he took. And so all of this, once again, was just confusing to me as a child. And I would often look up at the stars and ask God, like, why am I here? And like, why is the world like this? And so because of all of that, you know, due to these traumas and my empathic nature, by the time I hit junior high, I already knew what my mission was. My mission was really to help other people, especially children, heal themselves, right? All those that felt like they were broken or helpless or that there was something wrong with them. I really wanted to be an advocate and give them a voice. So in junior high, they had a little peer leader program. In high school, I joined the official one, went straight to college, mastered in psychology, and then went straight to graduate school, um, got my training as a marriage family therapist. And I knew then even the families that we were seeing, like a lot of students or a lot of kids that needed help were never gonna walk in through those doors. So I made sure to also get a school counseling credential with something called the CWA, which is Child Welfare and Attendance. It's so again, because I wanted to help the ones that needed it the most. Um, and then I did that for over 20 years and I was also a district crisis counselor. So really my whole life, I have been dealing with trauma work 
and just really helping people to heal on all levels. But as you can imagine with this work, like day in and day out, I was constantly giving so much of myself and I didn't have anybody to teach me about my empathic sensitivities. So to be honest, every day I was just absorbing everybody's energies and emotions on top of the terror and fear that I was already feeling as a child. And so over time, my body started to physically manifest into serious health conditions. So I was being diagnosed now with multiple autoimmune diseases um, and, and so much that I know I've already mentioned, just basically my body crashed, right? And I found that I could no longer walk or even stand up straight without being in intense pain. And so as my health started to fade, I was now going to several different doctors and many of them told me I needed to slow down. And I could remember one doctor in particular told me, Jennifer, you're running a marathon on a broken leg. And I thought, oh my goodness. And you would think that would make me stop or slow down, but it didn't do either. In my mind, I thought I needed to do more. So now I was gonna do more meditation. I was gonna do more mindfulness. I was gonna run more marathons. Um, so I actually did back then. And, you know, even do more yoga. And it wasn't just like regular yoga or vinyasa yoga. I would always go to the extreme. And so instead I was doing Bikram yoga. And if you don't know what Bikram yoga is, that's 90 minutes and 120 degree, 20 degree room um, with the humidifier on. And back then, my partner, who's now my husband, which I always joke, like, you must have really loved me because he did all these things with me. And he would go with me to Bikram Yoga, come out looking like a wet dog, and always tell me, like, I just feel like I came out of an oven, right? So just know that sometimes we will do anything that we can when we're trying to heal. But the truth was, like, I really couldn't do more in those aspects. What I really needed to do is to come back to my own heart and to start healing the little girl that was within me. But as you can imagine now, doctors were telling me, you know, just how bad things were and they wanted me to take prescribed medications and they were suggesting surgeries. But for me in my heart, I knew that that wasn't the path for me. I've always felt connected to the other side. And so I decided that I was gonna start to research alternative ways to heal myself. And so it was actually my declining health at that point that really catapulted me to learn all about, um, we'll say energy psychology and energy medicine and any type of alternative healing modalities. And so back then I started to see chiropractors and acupuncturists and energy healers. I even changed my diet, right, to the extreme. So once again, going from a regular diet to a vegan diet, to a raw diet, to juicing almost for a whole year. Hmm. I began to see, um, we'll say energy healers. So I remember receiving my first Reiki treatment and this is really where like things opened up for me. So I'm in that first session, you know, of course I knew she has only two hands. So she was at the top of my head, but over time it felt like I could feel her hands in different places. It was almost like she had six hands. And at one point I could feel like a string was pulling on my belly button. And I thought like, oh, that's so weird. Like, that can't just be my long hair. Like there's something, there's something going on. So I opened my eyes and poor thing, I know I startled her and she asked if I was okay. And I told her, oh yeah, I'm fine. I just, but I feel this string, there's something on me. And that's when I noticed her fingers were actually pulled up over my solar plexus. And she was telling me, oh no, I was actually pulling up your solar plexus because it had been so deflated down. As you can imagine, I was like completely amazed by that. And I know she was amazed that I could feel the energy that strongly, that I decided to become a Reiki master. I learned two different healing modalities within Reiki that I now teach my students. I then couldn't get enough of it. So I learned quantum touch. I learned integrative chakra therapy because I wanted to understand how the chakras interplayed with all of this. I learned things like Bach flower remedies and the power of essential oils and Donna Eden energy medicine, because I wanted to learn about whole body systems. And then with my psych background, I also looked into energy psychology. And so I started to learn techniques like emotional freedom technique, thought field technique, um, neuro-linguistic programming, soul retrieval, somatic experiencing, and the power of word medicine. You know, you can think of that as affirmation and decrees. 
And so I really used all of those healing modalities to help heal my inner child and emotional wounds, right? But I was now doing it from a place of compassion and self-love and self-acceptance. And so by doing that, then I was able to address the emotional, the mental, the physical, and the spiritual aspects that were causing dis-ease within my body. And it helped me really to develop a compassion for myself, for my soul's journey, and for others. And that's why I'm so passionate about helping others do inner child work, because I know that within every adult, there may be an inner child within them that needs some support. And that's how I started. Absolutely. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Absolutely. And, you know, and the thing is like so many of us have done so many different modalities. We've learned so many techniques, et cetera, but it is about using the tools, right? Using these modalities and techniques for ourselves as well, like doing that inner work. So, you know, when, when we talk about the inner child, uh, I think most of us are familiar, right? We know about it. We work with it. I, I do processes with inner child work as well, et cetera. But in 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 your understanding and with your experience, what is the inner child and why is it important to heal the inner child? Yeah. So Carl Jung was the one who actually turned the coin inner child. But to me, it's simply a part of you that's really frozen in childhood. And it's still and that part of you is still experiencing the same emotions and beliefs and memories that they had back then. Right. And for some people, you can also consider it just a younger version of yourself, right, that really feels unsafe. Right. And this they're waiting to be heard and seen and loved by you. And, you know, it's important to heal it because what we found is that basically from conception to about seven years old or even nine years old, this is when we're really developing our emotional well-being and our views of ourself and of the world. And when a child experiences trauma in any form, it's going to have a profound effect on their sense of self, on their confidence, and about the beliefs that they carry into adulthood. And that's because as children, we get programmed from our parents, from our teachers, from society, with certain beliefs, right? So imagine that if you were neglected in some way, whether that was, you know, emotional abuse or physical abuse, whatever it was for you, your view of the world is gonna be quite different than from somebody who was nurtured and valued and seen. And even though as we grow up, our brains become more logical, right? In the way that we think, that still doesn't erase all the memories and the thoughts and the feelings that you had from childhood. And what I find most is that most people don't realize that the effects of those memories from childhood are actually what drive them to make their choices in adulthood. And that's why our reactions to some situations can be really intense sometimes. You know, they're just disproportionate. And that's because the child part of you has now taken over and you're no longer in the driver's seat of your own life. You may be in the back seat, And for some of you, you might be all the way back in the trunk. And we've all been there, right? We've had those experiences. And so it's just important to point out that if you've experienced trauma, you know, it's not as easy as you just move on and heal. Because I, I hear people say that sometimes. It's really that the trauma gets buried deep inside of you and then it ends up resurfacing when you least expect it. And that's really where inner child work comes in because as you start to heal your own inner child, then you no longer feel fragmented or broken or feeling like right outside of yourself, that incomplete feeling. And it really allows you to feel more energized because you're now connecting back to your heart and soul. Right? You're integrating all those parts of you so that way you can start living your life with, like I like to say all the time, with more compassion and more ease and more grace. And this is why I feel it's important to start healing your inner child. Absolutely. And I just want to clarify one point that you made. So not all of our experiences are necessarily were abuse. They were just, you know, things that happened, but not, not necessarily, I wouldn't call them all of them to be abuse, right? And in, in childhood, just, you know, some people didn't know any better. They were doing the best they could, et cetera, but it wasn't always abuse. So, because, um, right, because, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, because I've had trauma in the past and I know some of it was not intentional and it, it was not, it was not abuse, et cetera. It was just the situation, but it, it was still traumatic for me, right? It still affected me, but I would never term that as abuse. 
Yeah. So we all go through experiences in life. And to be honest, you know, I know people will talk about big T traumas, little T traumas. I kind of stay away from that language. If you would just think about it, you just experienced something, something happened, whether it happened to you or even if you just witnessed it, but it got lodged in your nervous system, your nervous mm -hmm. system had a reaction. And a lot of things that we end up playing out now as adults actually happened before the age of five. So you wouldn't have even had the language or the understanding of what was happening. And you're right. For most of us, you, as you get older, you come to realize that you did the best you could with the resources you had. And that included your parents, your caretakers, your teachers. And so, you know, they may have had a bad day, but we took it really personally, right? But most importantly is that it just got lodged in your nervous system and it's your nervous system yeah. that's reacting to situations. Yeah, absolutely. And so I want to talk a little bit about the, the, about the chakras that are impacted by the childhood trauma. And I'm assuming it's going to be the three lower chakras for sure. Yes. You know, mostly, right? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So when I was studying to be an integrative chakra therapist, we had to see over 100 clients. And of course, you know, we're all energy. So the clients that came to me were the ones who experienced some type of childhood trauma. And what I found was that the first three chakras are the ones that really became unbalanced, right? Those are the ones that were always talking to me during in the sessions. And I'm just going to briefly go through them because, you know, chakras could be its own talk in itself. But you know, if you were to look at your first chakra, which is your root chakra, which is located at, you know, like the base of your tailbone, right? This governs how you feel in the world. It governs your safety and survival. And so this is whether you're starting to look at, you know, are you able to feel grounded and connected to your family, to society, and to even Mother Earth? Or do you feel ungrounded all the time? It also impacts your beliefs about the world right? Whether we feel safe and grounded and supported, or whether we can feel like the world is out to get us, or like it's a very dangerous place. And on a physical level, when you're looking at symptoms, I want you to just think anything in the lower half of the body. So maybe that's things with your feet, with your ankles, with your knees. Um, this could be arthritis. It could be even having sciatica pain or even constipation, right? So just think kind of like the lower body. And I know for me, like I shared with you due to my traumas that I went through as a child, I definitely didn't feel safe. And I want you to remember that as children, we don't have the same resources or reasonings that we do as an adult. So like one of my mentors always says, you know, we didn't have a car and a credit card, so we couldn't just get ourselves out of a situation. And then I know I mentioned Richard Ramirez already. So as a little girl, I really had no concept of how far he was away from me only that I could be the next little girl that he took. And so you can imagine then that I became fearful of the world. My root chakra definitely was in balance. I didn't feel like I could authentically express myself. And to be honest, I didn't even feel like it was safe to exist in the world. So I really stayed in my upper three chakras more than my lower chakras, which then brings us to your sacral. So your sacral is your second chakra. And that can definitely become imbalanced because this is where um, we're looking to see if you feel safe to express your emotions, right? And if you don't feel safe to express them, then this is where abuse and abandonment and the energies of like anger and resentment and rejection, betrayal, they all kind of live in this area. And this can look like not having healthy boundaries in life. You might become a people pleaser or maybe just an overgiver, you know, if you look at it that way. And if you experienced any type of sexual abuse, right, then it definitely impacts the chakra as well. And you might find that it's harder for you to connect with others in a really loving and intimate way. And so some of the physical aspects you can start to see to show up here in your sacral chakra would be things like um, sexual and reproductive issues, this could be urinary and bladder, like kidney issues kind of in that area. Um, you could also have pelvic and low back pain, right? Just like I did. So once again, having gone through abuse, I didn't feel like it was safe in the world. I know for myself, I would constantly go into people pleasing mode whenever I felt somebody was upset. And I would do that to try and protect myself and my loved ones, right? And I was just trying to control the situation to keep the peace. 
But you can imagine by doing that, I was constantly bending backwards, right? For other people. And I know that that's what contributed to my lower back pain and sciatica pain. And then we'll go up now to the third chakra. So your third chakra is all about your personal power, right? And if you've gone through trauma, then this will definitely become out of balance because you feel powerless in those situations. And this tends to impact your self-worth and your self-esteem. And even over time, you can start to even lose your own identity because you just don't feel safe being out in the world, right? What I find is that a lot of people start comparing themselves with others. Um, they're worried about other people's judgments and opinions. And there's this fear of rejection, right? And they just don't feel really confident to express themselves authentically in the world. And then some physical symptoms that might show up here, you could think are like indigestion and IBS and ulcers and even diabetes. And so just to kind of give you an example of this, you know, one of my clients before we started working together had a uh, father who was an alcoholic. And so she now had a partner and whenever they would go to social gatherings, if he drank an alcoholic beverage, the moment she smelled the alcohol in his breath, she would immediately kind of disassociate, leave her body, and she would feel like that helpless child again. And so I just want you to know that sometimes we react to situations that once again are just disproportionate. It's just those younger parts, your nervous system got activated, and then this is how it starts to impact your chakras and the way that you show up in the world. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. As you were um, describing some of those symptoms and I mean, I definitely had <laughs> all of that stuff, well, not, not everything, but most of it. So definitely, you know, as I was growing up, my three lower chakras were definitely affected. They're a lot better now, but I mean, I could definitely relate to like the lower back pain, the sciatica, the, uh, the UTIs or, you know, it just so much, you know, and, um, and I think a lot of us can just based on some of the experiences that we've had, but it's just interesting to, you know, really make that connection, right? Between the chakras, between what I was experiencing physically and between the inner child wounds that I was carrying at that time, right? Yeah, so thank you. Definitely, because I think, you know, for most of us, we're just going to take the medical model, right? And we're thinking we need this medicine or we need this. And, you know, you can take all these things and you might get a little bit better, but you never really heal. And I know for me personally, it wasn't until I did inner child work. That's what really healed me. So, of course, the, you know, eating raw foods and juicing, you know, that did heal part of my body because we still have a physical body. But it's the emotional body that ends impacting the physical body over time. And that's why we say, you know, it's dis-ease, right? It's just not having the flow yeah. within your own body. Absolutely. Um, so how can, I mean, I know I had a lot of inner child wounds. I know, because I know about <laughs> my history. Um, but I And I know about all the work that I've done. So I've healed most of it, but there's still some stuff there. I, I know that because this past week, has been quite challenging and um you know even like today if somebody says something to me the wrong way i'm gonna either yell or i'm gonna cry one or the other right so i know that about myself and so it's like i know there's still some stuff there that is you know wanting to be healed so how can we check how can we tell if our inner child is wounded and needs some healing yeah, definitely. So, you know, I invite everybody here uh, that's on this live and those that, you know, are even going to watch the replay, you know, as I ask these questions, really tune into yourself, right, and see how you would answer them. So the first thing I do is, you know, I take people kind of through four areas of their life. And the first one's the most obvious. It's just reflecting back on your own childhood experiences. And so what you want to start to ask yourself is, did you feel safe as a child? right? Did you feel loved and nurtured as a child? You want to look and see, did you feel like you um, like belonged, right, within your own family unit or within your society? You can look and see if you were an overachiever or if you felt like you had to be a perfectionist, right? For me, I know I felt like there was something wrong with me. So you could also see, did you have that as well? And then you can look and see, did you feel safe expressing your emotions or did you feel ashamed for having them, right? 
whether you felt that they were good or bad, depending on, you know, um, how your caretakers raised you, right? So you want to look at those things and then you want to see, like, did you feel like you belonged or did you feel like you were an outsider? Or I always joke around, like, you know, an alien being dropped in. And I say that because, you know, first I, I was an empath and no one else in my family was like me. So I definitely felt that way. And then the family that um, I was born into, I didn't necessarily look like either my mother or my father. In my whole life, people have always wondered what ethnicity I am. So the story behind that one that I'll, I'll share with you today is, you know, I remember being a second grader and I believe it was a male substitute teacher because I only remember him that one time. But I remember him coming up to me and asking me like, what are you? And I was like, I'm Jennifer. And he's like, no, what are you? And I'm like, I'm a second grader. What are you? I'm a girl. And I just remember like feeling so overwhelmed at that point. He said it one more time. I took off running to the playground crying and just yelling like, I'm a human, you know? <laughs> so for me, that was really, really strong. And I would just ask you to check, like, when you look at those questions, how did your childhood feel to you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to think about it, but definitely, but you know. That's right, Laura. I'll, I'll just go through them. But that would be the first area to start reflecting on, right? You know, just yeah. simple childhood experiences. And then the next area is your relationships. So you want to start looking, you know, at all of your relationships. So whether that's with your family, your friends, your coworkers, but you want to see, do they feel balanced and harmonious, right? You want to see, like, do you have a hard time setting boundaries in your relationships? Or maybe you even feel guilty when you set a boundary. And then when you look at your intimate relationships, you really want to notice, do they feel respectful and healthy to you? And then, as you know, conflicts arise in any relationship, no matter who you are. Right? So that's just being honest. So when those conflicts arise, how do you show up in them? Right? Do you tend to lash out in anger? Do you tend to be the people pleaser? Do you give the silent treatment or maybe you go into complete shutdown? And what you're wanting to notice is like when you're around other people, do they dictate how you feel, how you feel about yourself or how you feel about others? And like I've shared with you before, you know, because of my level of safety, right? Wanting to feel safe. I could go from either a people pleasing mode or maybe I might just be silent or in those times when I felt really unsafe, I could completely go into shutdown mode. And so now you can just kind of reflect everybody here, you know, what do you typically do when those things happen? And then the third area for people to look at today is within your physical body. So like I shared with you, my body was definitely talking to me quite loudly, but you want to notice, you know, within your physical body, if you have anything, let's say with your bones or your muscles or your joints or autoimmune issues, or even if you tend to get sick often, Right? A lot of people don't think about that. So whether you constantly get colds or flus or bronchitis, you can also look to see if you feel comfortable in your own skin or in your own body, or do you tend to feel ashamed of your body? Or maybe you have criticism of your body. Like every time you see yourself in a mirror, you have more negative things to say or think than a positive thing. And I know I've already shared with you um, or even getting sick, that would be another one. So I know with COVID that came out a lot, like all of a sudden there is this new wave of fear of just getting sick and not really believing that your body could heal itself. So I know for you, I've already shared, you know, I've had autoimmune and then not being able to walk and the whole spinal sciatica situation. So for me, my body was definitely talking to me quite loudly. And now you can check for yourself. You know, is your body giving you any signs and symptoms right now? And then the last area to kind of look at are your beliefs about the world. So one of the first areas that I'll ask people if they feel that they're controlling. And if you are, just know that you're trying to keep yourself safe. So just release any judgment you have around that word. But if you were to think of it like a continuum, what you also want to check for is to see, you know, if you're controlling here, has it gone to the point of obsessive compulsive disorder, right? Because if it has, then you definitely have some things that you want to work on. 
But what I'm really looking you know, at when I talk with people is, are you able to go in the flow with life, right? Or do you constantly feel like you have to control things? Even new experiences. For some people that can be fun and exciting. And for other people that can be terrifying and you just have a lot of anxiety when a new experience or opportunity comes your way. You also want to look and see, does your outer environment have to be a certain way for you to be okay? So once again, for me personally, you know, because of my traumas, let's say I was at a restaurant. I would purposely sit like with my back against a wall and at an angle where I could see all the exits and all the entrances because I needed to know who was coming and going at all times. Another area you can look at um, is fear of abandonment. So really checking to see, you know, are you fearing that people are going to leave you? Even to the point of like people are going to die and physically leave you here on the earth plane. And I've mentioned before, like you want to see if you belong or if you do feel like an outsider. Do you belong here on earth? Right. And then to see if maybe you're even constantly reliving your past experiences, whether they're, well, we'll say good or positive ones or unpositive or unhelpful. I typically say helpful or unhelpful, but Still, you know, you want to live in the present moment. So you just want to see, are you constantly reliving some of your past experiences? And then lastly, it's really, do you trust life, right? Do you trust and believe that the world is here to love you and support you and guide you? Or do you feel like the world is out to get you, that it's really unsafe and dangerous and almost like you have to fight to survive, right? So... For, you know, once again, for myself, because of everything I went through, I didn't always make my decisions out of love. And that's where you really want to make all your decisions from or out of love. I started to make a lot of my decisions more out of fear from the college that I went to, to even the cars I bought. So when I was young, I really wanted a Jetta, I bought myself a brand new Jetta, and I let my mom drive my car. And unfortunately, she totaled it. And I remember getting to the wreck and I looked at it and of course the car looked horrible, but it did what it was supposed to do. You know, the engineering for a Jetta is for the car to actually compress and take all of the impact. So that way the people inside don't. But because of that, my next car wasn't one that I wanted from my heart necessarily. I wanted now a safe car. So I bought an SUV thinking that, well, it was bigger and higher, I guess is how I'll say it. Um, and even down to the clothes I wore, right? So once again, just making more decisions out of fear than just out of love. And so now uh, everybody here can start to look in these areas, you know, how does that impact you? What did you resonate with? And that'll give you some clues on whether your inner child is wounded. Yeah, awesome, thank you. And so you gave us a lot to think about. And for those of us who are here live right now, I want you to take a moment if you can and just type in the chat how that resonated with you and what was the, you know, one of the things that really, really spoke to you that you really tuned into. Um, there's a lot there for me for sure. And um, you're gonna have to go back definitely and watch or listen again to get them all again, because there was quite a few, but oh my goodness, <laughs> definitely, definitely can relate, right? So uh, let me know in the chat how that was for you and what what came up for you, okay? So now I know that you wanted to talk about the the CAS method for inner child healing or CASS, what, what is that? Yeah, so just when I was going through my own uh, inner child healing journey, this is something that I ended up creating for myself. Um, I know I shared with the Laura that when I first started, there was some um, energy workers and philosophies out there that just felt harsh for my own nervous system and the way that I wanted to heal. And so this was kind of created from that process of learning what was going to be best for me and for my heart and for my inner child. So CAS stands for, you know, C stands for um, compassion, A is for acknowledge, S is for self-acceptance, and then the last S is for self-love. And so the first thing I had to do, and, and I have all my clients do, is that you have to start to have compassion for your soul's journey. And in order to start to cultivate compassion, you really have to start to acknowledge what has happened. 
because so many of us spend so much energy trying to either refuse to acknowledge what has happened or we're trying to push it away or we're trying to bury it deep in inside of us. And when we do that, that only causes, you know, once again, dis-ease within the body and it uses us so much of our energy. And I ask my clients all the time when I first meet with them to tell me about their experiences, their soul's journey. And a lot of times they'll make light of it, right? They'll kind of joke around and, and then I'll ask them, well, if your life is a movie, like would I need some tissues? Like, would I cry? And they always tell me, oh my gosh, yes, you would need a box or two. So then I ask them, well, then why are you making light of it? You know, and I know that that's hard, but that's just a coping mechanism that we do. And what I tell them is that it's really time for you to be loyal to your soul, right? And that you now need to go and get all those younger versions of yourself that you've kind of left outside of you. And we're now going to meet them with some compassion and some love and some care and some support. And when you start to take the time to find all those younger versions of yourself, right, the ones that you've left behind, and you really start to meet them on a heart to heart level, then you're now entering the phase that I like to call is self-acceptance, because you're now really going to see yourself as you are, right? You realize that you did the best you could with the resources that you had at the time. And now it's time for you to heal by integrating all those parts of you that have just been right outside your energy field for so long. And it's like your soul has kind of like fragmented. You could think of it that way. And so you're just going to integrate all of that back into your soul, back into your heart. So that way you truly can feel whole and complete. You know, you won't feel like there's parts of you missing. And by doing this process from a place of compassion and unconditional love, then you're able to release the judgments, not only of yourself, but of others. And then you come into a deeper sense of self-love because you no longer can see yourself as you were. A lot of us are so critical and kind of mean to ourselves, right? But when you take yourself through this process, then you only have love and compassion for everything that you've gone through. And I think it's important to know that, you know, you have truly been waiting for yourself, right? You've been craving the love from yourself your whole life. And to know that you really are your own inner healer and you've just been waiting to bring yourself back home to your heart. And that's pretty much kind of like the cast method flow, even though we do use different energy healing modalities because everything is customized for the client, but, but that's the process of it. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so we are going to be doing a uh, connect to your inner child meditation as well as a healing meditation in just a few minutes, but there are some people with their, <clears throat> with their hands raised. If you have a question about inner child healing, um, great. If it's a reading, we're not doing any readings. We're just going to be doing the healing in just a, in just a little bit, okay? So uh, I know that Tanya and Sarah, and there's another Tanya, which she keeps losing connection, so hopefully she'll be able to come back. So do you want to just take a few quick questions about inner child healing, I guess? Sure. I'm assuming that's yes? <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Tanya, yeah, go ahead. Do you want to unmute yourself? Me, 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 me. Hello. Hello, ladies. Right. Oh, where do I start? Where do I begin? <laughs> I, well, uh, that's I, all I'm going to say. Yeah, <laughs> I did a lot of healing on my child and I did the uh, meditation with Marisa Peer when, you know, for inner child. But I still, um, I still, when I talk about my mom and uh, how she treated us, I still have tears. So, I mean, how long it will take to heal uh, well, the child wound, you know, that inflicted by your parents, uh, like the pe people who were supposed to kind of love you and make you sh make sure you feel confident, you grow up to feel confident and happy and uh, and all that stuff. Yeah. So I'm not sure exactly what work you've already done, but the work that, you know, I encourage people mm -hmm. to do with my clients is that we go back to those younger parts and we remove the emotional charge from the experience. Now, for some of you, it could be a very specific, you know, event that happened for you and others, it'll be this flow, right? So we would work with whichever one it is, but until mm -hmm. you go back and heal the emotional charge, 
and actually listen to that inner child, right? Give them what they needed. And then you can actually incorporate them into your heart. And if they're not ready yet, you can incorporate them into your energy field until you build their trust. And once you do this, then, like I said, you no longer see yourself as you did because you've now incorporated a piece back to you and you're able to see your piece in a different light as well, right? Through this okay. healing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I did, I did almost nearly something like you are mentioning, mm -hmm. but I think um, because it started with parents and then it was just continuation to it. And I know I wasn't child anymore, uh, but it all adds up and the base is the childhood, of course. Yes. So where where do the childhood stops, uh, like the problems or whatever, neglect, and then adults neglect begin. And then, okay, by, by healing the childhood uh, traumas, do yeah. we heal the future traumas because they are kind of they don't bother us anymore yeah so we find that you know the earlier that you can heal from so from whatever mm -hmm. is the earliest that it actually takes away all the charge from the other ones right it, okay. it kind of, you know if you imagine like a balloon you start to deflate it right mm -hmm. so you don't always have to work on like every single thing we've gone mm -hmm. through no i understand if you've had a lot, right? If, you know, when it's your own parents, when it's your own family, then this becomes a daily thing, right? And this is what we would call complex trauma, right? So mm. it's not PTSD where there's a single event that happens and then yeah. people mm. know that. When it's happened multiple times and over years, right? It, it does leave a different imprint. And so that's why you really wanna go back and you were picking up all those pieces. And so now when you get triggered, I would invite you just to kind of think about it and just be like, oh, you know what, there's a part of me that still needs some healing. Let me go meet her and give her some compassion and love. Right? Because I know even in the beginning of my journey, I would almost beat myself up like oh, I worked on that, right? You know, why is that still here? But the truth is, it's an aspect, right? So if you think about going up a spiral staircase, it's just another layer that got revealed. Uh -huh. And that's to start seeing it with more love and compassion. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course it does. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Lara. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. All right, we're going to go to the other Tanya before she uh, loses connection again. <laughs> the other Tanya, you want to unmute yourself? Hello. I would okay. like to ask the question, how we do know it's... Uh, inner child trauma if we are doing that healing how we know it's not ancestor trauma or karma clearing or any kind of healing how we can make sure can you help me about that you know i don't really differentiate uh, or make a big difference for me whenever i do any type of healing work i also claim that it's going to heal your ancestors like i have that as part of my intention and anything that you today heal seven generations back and seven generations forward. So, you know, sometimes I feel like it's our own brains at times that we just want to understand and label and put things in boxes a lot. But the truth is, it's just energy. So what's in you is within me because we're all connected. And so it really doesn't matter at that point for me personally. Um, I think if you were to go back, you could just easily see something uh, let's say it's the fear of speaking up. So maybe in your ancestors, you have generational trauma of not being able to feel safe speaking up, right? Maybe you had a line of energy workers, I'll just say it that way, and you know what's happened to them in the past, right? Because genetically things are passed down in cells. So, you know, I mean, there's been a ton of animal studies, which I hate to say that, but, you know, they'll find that they will be mean to one species and they can link it, let's say, to the smell of peppermint. Well, then they'll have children and there's even grandchildren and the grandchildren will be afraid of the peppermint, even though they were never exposed to anything. So, you know, for me, it's like, oh, this is here. I claim that I'm clearing it for myself and for my ancestors and for the generation. And then for me, because I try to hold space, I also want to clear it for the collective if they're ready to release it because everybody has free will. 
So just kind of tune in for yourself and see what feels right for you. And I just want to add too, you know, like sometimes it doesn't, you know, like you said, it doesn't really matter what, whether it's ancestral, whether, whether it's past life, it doesn't really matter as long as the healing takes place, as long as the transformation takes place. And I know some of us, it's like, you know, we may not know what happened to our ancestors. We may not know what happened in our past life, but we do know what happened in this lifetime. Exactly. <laughs> right. So we do know what happened here and now. And that is, you know, you have to work on this first before you even have to worry about the ancestors or past life. Work on the, on the present life and include the ancestral, like Jennifer was saying, and the past life for sure. But, you know, like, let's face it, the, the most uh, resonant wound is from this lifetime. So work on that, if that makes sense. Okay, does that make sense, Tanya? Oh yeah, thank you so much, thank you. Awesome, you're welcome. Thank you. Great question. Thank you. All right, Sara, for Sara's last question, and then we have a question in the chat. Go ahead, Sara. Hello. Hello. Uh, I had a friend die last week, and it was from an inner child wound when he was four. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, he, when he was four, his brother died, and he became very anxious, and he had digestive problems. He lived with me for a while, and I tried to help him, but he just never would eat the right foods. And then he got diverticulitis, and it was all due to this anxiety from this childhood wound. And, um, yeah, then he had some serious stuff and some surgery, and he died on last Monday. Um, I feel like I'm very much in touch with my inner child, like I'm the first one at the playground to start checking out all the children's equipment. Although somebody told me last week in this really bogus Tarot reading, no, that's your imagination. That's not your inner child. And my kids have said, mom, you're much more in touch with your inner child than we are. I'm always playing and I have stuffed animals on my bed and all that. But I do know I have wounds as well, partially because, um, I was always told, you know, you're mature, you're intelligent, grow up. Back, like my father said to me once, you're acting like a child. <laughs> I said, I'm only eight. What do you think I am? I am a child. <laughs> but yet there is that message, grow up. And I have um, a great um, wound from losing something. I'm not sure what it is, but when I lose things, it just creates this heartrending feeling in me that it has to be restored it could be from a last lifetime um i was in the holocaust and i died and it could be from losing that i'm not sure um and one thing that was very comforting to me was that after my mother died she sent me a message that was i never understood you when you were alive but from the other side i see the work you're doing is holy i'm so different like you said from the rest of my family and they mm -hmm. didn't understand me and they didn't know what to do with me and um I've gotten over mostly my people pleasing, but that's been super strong most of my life. And and now I just tend to curb it in myself. I say, you know, I've given enough. That's enough. I'm, I'm not going to give into this anymore. Let me figure out what. So what's I'll... the question? What's the question? The question. Well, one of the questions was about. Is are you talking about an inner child that might be wounded, or an inner child that can play and you know ride bikes and all that stuff but in seeking to hear heal our when our inner child um what's the best way to get at what the wound is to find it and heal it yeah so the inner child is both it's that playfulness that's inside of you you know that kid like spirit so i'm glad to hear that you have stuffed animals and you go to playgrounds i'm going to be sharing that in just a few moments here um, some ways that you can connect with your inner child. And, and I will bring that one up as well. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot what your second question was. The other question was about um, childhood wounds mm -hmm. that you are still carrying. Yeah. Despite, so I just kind of having done all the work, you know? Yeah. I just went through some of those areas. So once again, it's, you know, looking just directly at your childhood experiences, but also your physical body, your relationships and your beliefs about the world, right? So you're you're gonna notice, or do any of those feel unbalanced for you? Mm -hmm. Well, if you go back- thing, Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. 
Oh, no, I was just going to say, if you go back through the questions that I asked, you're going to start to notice where things are popping up for you. You know, you might be really good, let's say, in your work relationships, but not in your friendships, right? So, or vice versa. Like for me, I, because of everything I went through, then I was like, nope, when I have a relationship, it's going to look like this. <laughs> like I, I could have a strong boundary, but I didn't have it at work. I didn't have it with my boss. And so I was constantly people pleasing. Oh, you need me to do that? Okay. Okay. It's for the kids. Okay. But I just exhausted myself for somehow I, I didn't make that connection of I needed a healthy boundary with work, but I was trying to do healthy boundaries over here with, let's say friends or, or family. Does that make sense? Yeah. And my initial uh, hit when I hear that is, oh, at work, I would um, not be able to have a healthy boundary because I would want them to be happy with me. And that's, you know, I, what I would see as part of doing my job so that I'm doing a good job to accede to, you know, all those requests. I didn't hear all the questions. My kids are, thank goodness, are visiting here from Israel and they were all running around the kitchen and talking. So <laughs> couldn't hear everything. That's okay, because I know Laura's going to have a replay of this. So I, oh, I yeah. might go back and do I'll that. Listen. You know, yeah. I, yeah. I would. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. And I'm, I'm, I'm so glad your kids are there. That makes me happy. <laughs> me too. They're having a wonderful time. And thank goodness we're having fabulous weather. Okay, I'm glad. Yeah. All right, there's a question from Linda. Linda says, what are a few ways that we can honor and celebrate our inner child to feel safe, open, and vibrant in life again? Ooh, well, we're actually about to go into that. That's how to connect and heal your inner child. And I am going to offer some, some uh, lighter suggestions for that. Awesome. So great. Thank you, Linda. We, we will get to that. Um, all right, so I want to just quickly talk about the packages, and then we will get into the meditation and the healing. So give me one second. I'm going to share my screen, the right screen. One sec. All right, so you should be seeing my screen now. So Jennifer has three packages. Package A is the Emotional Triggers Workshop. Package B is the one-on-one -on -one 60 minute inner child healing session. And package C is both the inner emotional triggers workshop and the and the personal session. And as you can see, packages B and C have a payment plan available. And of course, all of them you can use your uh inner circle gift code if you're a member of the inner circle. All right. So the inner child and emotional triggers workshop. Jennifer, let's talk about that first. Sure. So the workshop will be over Zoom. So just like this, it's about 60 minutes long. And we're going to start to look at um, some inner child aspects, right? And we're also going to look at your emotional triggers because once again, like I mentioned, as the adult you are today, things come up and you don't understand why you react so intensely. Think about something simple like maybe a computer glitch or you spilled your coffee cream, you know, but you just blow up, right? You, you just know you can't handle it. So then you know you're not quite the rational adult you are today. So this is what this workshop's gonna kind of look at. So we all are gonna look at some childhood stuff, but in the context of emotional triggers, because I feel like that's what's easiest for people to recognize is what's happening today right now. In this workshop, we're going, they're gonna be divinely guided. So we will use different processes in them. You know, there will be a meditation, um, there will be some visualization, you know, you'll get a little bit of a teaching of, you know, whatever the topic is, this time it's emotional triggers. Um, and then we'll do some energetic processes and that can include emotional freedom technique and inner child work. Once again, because I want to calm down your nervous system, bring you back in the present moment to help you feel grounded and then get the clarity you need to start to heal whatever aspect is showing up for you at that day and that time. And yeah when when is the workshop i believe we set it for saturday may 18th at 12 okay. pacific standard time which would be p.m eastern standard so i will add that to the page a little bit later today just so everybody knows because i do remember you telling me that and i don't know why i didn't add it but <laughs> it's in a couple of weeks so may 18th but i will add the add the dates and it is on zoom perfect all right, so 
next package B is the one-on-one -on -one 60 minute inner child healing session. All right. So once again, the session is over Zoom just like this. Unless you prefer a phone call, then I will accommodate and, and we'll do a phone session. Um, and once again, these are all divinely guided. So we're going to work on whatever you would like to work on, whether that's a very specific childhood experience that you want to start to clear, or if you just want to be able to connect with your inner child, or maybe it's something completely different um, that you want to address today. But a lot of times I find that it's still going to connect back to your inner child in some way. So just know that you'll have full control over the session. And like I said, it's 60 minutes and we meet over Zoom. Awesome. Thank you. And then package C, like I said, is both the 60 minute inner child healing session plus the emotional triggers workshop. There's some wonderful testimonials as well that people have written here on the special effort page. Please take a look at that. And if you want to learn more about Jennifer, you can always look at the special offer page as well. And um, again, packages A, B, and C, please use your inner circle gift code as well, okay? So I know I'm going to be getting, <laughs> I'm going to be booking an inner child healing session. <laughs> it doesn't matter if I'm also a healer. It doesn't matter if I do inner child healing work myself, but sometimes you just need um, support from somebody else, so. Oh, we all need support. And I think that's important to point out, like, we're not islands, you know, somehow we got it in our head. We're supposed to be an island, but that's not true. We get support for anything. It's like, you know, your computer goes down, you go see a computer expert, your car breaks down, unless you're a mechanic, you go see a mechanic, right? You don't Absolutely. feel break your bone. You go see a doctor, but for some reason, when it comes to emotional work, right. Or healing work on, on the inner part of us, we somehow think that we have to do it all on our own. And that's not true. Yeah. That is definitely not true. All right, so let's do the connecting to your inner child meditation, and then we're going to do a, a closing group healing meditation as well. So, uh, is do you, should we as listeners have some sort of agenda or intention in mind, or we're just open to receive? Well, uh, do you mind if I just share with you the ways you can connect to answer? Um, oh, sure. Sorry? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So once again, when I was looking to connect with my inner child, I remember going to lots of different like websites and talks just like this one. Um, and I wanted to find like an inner child thing. And it was so hard for me back then. I, I really don't know why, but either way, I wanted to share with you today the top five ways that I started to connect with my inner child. And um and I'm hoping that these will be helpful for you too, especially when you're new to it and you just want to start the process. Or even if you are already experienced connecting with your inner child, um, I feel that these are the ones that are just really helpful. So the first one is really for like a beginner. You just want to become aware that you have an inner child and really begin that dialogue with them. And I just want to remind you that your inner children, they all need to be seen and heard and loved by you. And we call this reparenting. So this is what you're basically doing with every process that you start to connect with your inner child. And you can start to do this um, simply like through mantra work. So you can think of this as like simple phrases or affirmations, but you want to start talking to them, have that dialogue and let them know that you love them, that you see them, that you're here for them, and just open that door of connection. The second one I have for you is doing journaling or automatic writing. So I would encourage all of you to get a nice inner child journal, you know, just one that you're going to dedicate just to working with your inner child. And the exercise is simply called left hand, right hand. But what you're going to do is just take a pen and you're going to write a question to your inner child with your dominant hand. So for me, my dominant's my right, but you're just going to write out the question. It could be, how are you feeling today? Or maybe you've already tuned in that day and noticed that they're feeling sad, right? You got this feeling of it. So then you can write that, you know, are you feeling sad today or why are you feeling sad? And then what you're going to do is put the pen in your left hand or your non-dominant hand, I should say, and you're going to write out a response. And that's going to feel really awkward and vulnerable and the writing is going to be messy, but that's exactly what children's writing looks like, right? So once again, I invite you not to judge it or have any criticism. Just let whatever gets downloaded into you, you just write it down on the paper. 
And then you would take the pen, put it back in your dominant hand, and you're gonna write out the next question. And when you're ready for the response, put it back in your non-dominant hand and write out the response. And you're gonna keep going back and forth like this, right? Because you're gonna have this dialogue. And then in the end, you wanna just go back and revisit everything that you wrote down. And I promise you, you're gonna get some wonderful insights into your own inner child. The next one I have for you is one of my favorites and it's the Honopono prayer. And if you don't know what the Honopono prayer is, it's a Hawaiian prayer and it only has four phrases. So what I would do is I'd actually hold that picture of myself. I would take an age that I wanted to work with. I place it in between my hands and I would cite the prayer. Now, if you don't have a picture of yourself, you can simply place your hands over your heart and really envision yourself, let's say at the age of two, whatever it is that you want. And then the, the prayer, like I said, is only four phrases. So it's, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you, thank you. And even though I know this is very simple, I would say this over and over and over again. I would find the tears were just streaming down my face and I would do it till I felt this huge energetic shift in my heart because then I knew that I had healed an aspect of myself, but I had also connected to an inner child that was really outside of my field for a very long time. And if you've never tried that one, I would encourage you to try that. And then the next one is similar to what I believe Sarah was saying about going to your neighborhood um, park that has a playground and really just be in the energy of children. When you see children out at a playground, they're running around and they're laughing and there's lightness and fun with them, right? They're just being in the moment and enjoying life. And you would want to think, what did you enjoy when you were a child at a playground? I know for me personally, I love the swings. So I would go sit on the swing and swing just for a little bit because at the time when I was doing this, once again, I had severe back pain and sciatica pain. So I could do it for a few minutes and then I'd have to get up. But at my park, we also had um, twirlers or spinners. And so I would stand on it and spin and just let myself feel the lightness and the freedom. So you wanna see for yourself, you know, if you don't have any physical limitations or even if you do, what could you do to start to connect with your inner child in like a playground setting? But there's a lot of different activities you can do as well. So think of something as simple as even coloring. You can buy yourself a nice color book or just take out paper and use crayons. Or if you wanna connect with those really younger ages, I encourage you to buy the really fat crayons and hold it in your hand. Once again, it's gonna feel awkward again, but that's what it felt like when you were a child. You could also do things like singing and dancing and skipping or biking or swimming. Just what is it that your inner child liked to do when you were a kid? I know for one of my clients, her favorite thing to do was to play with her hula hoop. So she went out, to a store, bought a hula hoop for like five bucks. And now she spends like five minutes every other day just playing with her hula hoop and connecting with her inner child. And then the last one I have for you is just simply doing a guided healing inner child meditation or connection. And you can find a ton of them on YouTube. So just know that there are resources out there that you can start doing today, right? To start connecting with your inner child. And then now, you know, we're going to go ahead and do a short inner child connection meditation. Um, I invite you to just open your heart to really be here in the present moment. And because this is a new meditation or a new connection, I want you to set the intention that your inner child is going to present to you a happy memory, right? Because we want to start to build that trust, but also remember the fun and playfulness that we had. Okay, so I invite you now to everybody go ahead and close your eyes. Take another deep breath into your heart and just really fill it up with your own love and then go ahead and blow out. And I could already hear from somebody here in the group, well, what if it's not a happy memory? Just know if it's not a happy memory, you can raise your hand and I'm happy to answer any question about it. But for now, just set your intention for that. And I want you to take another deep cleansing breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Once again, we're just going to call in your divine spiritual team to be just a little bit closer right now to really help you to connect with your inner child 
and to remind you that you are safe and protected, that your guides and your angels, and like I said, your divine spiritual team is right here with you. And then I want you to imagine that off in the distance, you see a child blowing bubbles in the wind, and you see the happiness and joy as they blow each bubble. And you keep walking towards them until you finally notice that that young child is actually you. And the bubbles are actually starting to float your way now. And as the bubbles pass you, you're going to notice that within each bubble is a memory of your life. And some of the bubbles hold happy memories. While other bubbles that float by are memories when you felt unseen or unloved or unsafe. And as you look forward, you notice one really big bubble is coming your way. And as it becomes closer to you, the bubble starts to become more solid and you're able to hold it in your hands. And now I want you to take a really deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And I want you to look directly into the bubble now. I want you to notice what memory is in there. This memory is one that your inner child wants you to be aware of in this moment. And remember that it's just a memory and you're not reliving your past. It's simply a snapshot of where you were, an event that, ex that you experienced in your life. And now I want you to imagine that you're going to connect with that younger version of yourself with some love and some compassion. And your inner child is going to recognize you as the adult self, and they're going to start to build trust with you. You're going to let your inner child know that you're here for them, that you're going to hear them, and you're going to meet their needs now. You're going to ask them to share with you what they're thinking and what they're feeling. And you're going to do this all without judgment or criticism. You're really going to just open your heart and listen to them, connecting on a heart-to-heart -heart level. And I'm going to give you a few moments to do that now. Now next, I want you to notice what does your inner child need to hear from you today? Tune into them now and go ahead and let them know. And then I wanted just to remind you that you're all muted. And so I encourage you now to repeat after me out loud and let your inner child know that I will always love you. You are so precious to me. I'm here for you now to protect you and keep you safe. I will always love and accept you for who you are. You are more than enough, and you matter to me. And then once again, I want you to notice what else do they need to hear from you today? If there's something else, go ahead and say it to them now. And then I invite you now to have your inner child be with you. For some of you, you can ask your inner child to come directly into your heart. And for others, your inner child might not be ready to do that. And that's okay, because right now you're building trust in your relationship with this younger part of yourself. So right now, I just want you to simply invite them to be with you so that they know that they're not alone and they, that they know that you're going to protect them and love them unconditionally and that they're gonna be taken care of by you. So now I want you to take another really deep breath in through your nose. And I just want you to imagine hugging your inner child and either allow them to merge directly into your heart or into your field. 
And while you do this, your divine spiritual team is now going to hold space for the both of you to receive beautiful, loving, rainbow light energies that are supportive and healing. You can imagine that these energies are now going to melt away any childhood past wounds and programming that limits you, allowing you to feel loved and nourished and supported. And then I want you to take another deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. You can place your hands over your heart and give yourself some gratitude and your inner child for showing up today to do the inner healing with love and compassion. And when you're ready with no rush, you can open your eyes and come back to me. Beautiful. Thank you. How's everybody doing? Hopefully you saw a good memory. <laughs> I know I did. Um, but as I saw the good memory, it's weird. There's some there's some doubt came in, right? Because some doubt came in and then all these other stories of bad stuff came in. So I'm like, so then in that moment, I had to choose to trust what I was feeling or follow the doubt and I cho I chose to trust the, the original feeling so oh perfect it's interesting That's what you want to do you you want to reset your nervous system because you did have a lot of beautiful experiences growing up right so now we're reminding ourselves and our nervous system that we did experience those things and it's okay to lodge those memories in just as strongly yeah exactly no, it was good should I go into oh. the thing meditation to end today Sure. Um, so Kathy says it was a very sweet meditation. Good, Kathy. I'm glad. So Cindy, thank you. It was beautiful. Brought tears, but feeling peaceful now. Good. Oh, I was going to mention that too, or I'm sure Jennifer was too. That you might have tears that come up, and that's okay. Totally, you know, it's, it's a release, right? It's a um, release. Poignant. Yeah, it's a release and it's a relief. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, because I would tell my clients, you know. Not that I want to make people cry, but I feel like the best sessions are always the crying sessions, right? Because then you know yeah. you really is something you've held on for a really long time. Now my clients yeah. are excited to cry, but in the beginning they would, you know, try and hold it back, like, no, I don't want to cry. So <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. So you you wanted to do a closing uh, uh -huh. group closing group healing meditation yeah if that's okay just for a few moments i i just know that when we talk about inner child lots of emotions can get stirred up and and i just want to take you through a clearing meditation and once again i invite you to go ahead and allow your imagination just like you were when you were a child to start to shine through you right now just allow it to flow and once again i invite you to go ahead and close your eyes and take a couple of deep cleansing breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. And I want you to imagine that with every breath you take, that you're breathing in healing and relaxation energy. And once again, we're just going to call your divine spiritual team to come in a little bit closer. And then we're going to give your divine self permission to be in charge now of today's clearing. You're going to want to set your intention to receive healing on all levels of your being. And then I want you to imagine that from the heart of the earth, that a beautiful grounding column is going to come up and connect to the base of your spine. And then you're going to set your intention and give permission for all energies that are not yours, all energies that are not helpful, all energies that are not in present time, and all excess energies now to go down your grounding column to go back down into Mother Earth to be recycled into trans and transmuted into unconditional love. And I want you to notice as she does this, the beauty that starts to form around you. Now that you have your inner child back with you, what does she want to create? Notice if you start to see trees, maybe you see bodies of waters, maybe it's a playground, or maybe you see rainbows and butterflies. Just notice the beauty that starts to form from all of these energies. And then we're going to ask now 
as Mother Earth transmutes them, that she grounds only your authentic essence into your body. And you can imagine that the Earth energies are like the sunset. Imagine them nourishing you and loving you as they come up to greet you. And as you imagine all of these Earth energies coming into your body, you can also start to connect to the energies, the universal energies that are above you, all the way up from the multiverse. And you're going to allow these energies to shower upon you now as these energies are now filled with love and compassion. And just like a beautiful waterfall, they're gonna to start to wash away any energies of fear and doubt, of shame and guilt, anywhere where you're holding on to abusive or harmful patterns. It's just gonna to start to wash away all of these things. It's going to start to clear you and heal you and update any limitations from your childhood. And these energies are going to give you a mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual healing. And as these energies mix and merge with earth energies, you're really going to start to feel nurtured by them and loved by them. And a fun way to visualize both earth and universal energies coming into you is that for every cell in your body, imagine that there's a little point of light that gets turned on. And as these energies come in, it starts to turn on all of these little lights within you. And as each light is within a cell, if the cell is not healthy, imagine now that it's just gonna dissolve. And for all the cells that are good for your body, they're gonna be nourished. They're gonna be filled up with energy so that you feel healthier and more vibrant. And then we're gonna give permission now to be filled up with more of your authentic divine essence. And all of the supportive earth and universal energies are gonna go into all of your cells, into your atoms, into your DNA, into your organs and your tissues, into your chakras and energy systems. And it's really going to start to activate here at your heart center. Imagine this beautiful rainbow light that now goes out into your aura and into your Taurus field at 360 degrees and in all directions of time. And I want you to remember to breathe and to just let go of effort, just really relax into it. And as you do this, I want you just to tune into your body just for a moment to notice if your energy field already starts to feel better, cleaner, maybe more authentic to you. And now we're just going to give permission that for tonight and for the next three nights, part of the time while you're sleeping, we're going to allow your divine self to infuse you with all the love and wisdom that you need in this moment. And while you sound go to sleep and you're going to sleep very soundly, right? Very deeply. You're also going to wake up feeling refreshed, right? Refreshed and renewed is what I hear. That all of these benefits will automatically be integrated into your mind, into your body, into your emotions, and into your energy field. And we're going to allow this to happen for the next three nights. And now we're going to go ahead and dissolve our group energy healing vortex. And it's really important at this point for you to retrieve all your energy out of all of our fields. And simultaneously, we're going to retrieve all of our energy out of your field. And if you retrieve any energy now that your divine self doesn't want you to have, we're going to go ahead and give permission for it once again to be sent down your grounding column to be transmuted back into the earth, back into unconditional love. And then lastly, a fun thing I like to do is to go ahead and send out all those spiritual emails. Now that your energetic vibration has changed, you want to send it out to all the people you know, all the people that your soul wants to meet, to your pets and to your plants, allowing them to know of your new energetic vibration. And then I invite you once again to take a really deep cleansing breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And when you're ready with no rush, you can open your eyes and come back to me. Yeah, oh, that was awesome. Oh my goodness, that was great. <laughs> I love that.
<laughs> Lovely and nurturing, Linda says. Oh my goodness, that was that was good. It was exactly what I needed. Perfect. I feel so much calmer than I did before the call started. No, oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I'm so glad to hear. I'm glad to see you smiling. And just know that that's yeah. that your part of you that's like, yes, I'm here. Come play with me. <laughs> how's everybody doing how was that for you I know it was it was good for me I really liked it I I, I love that piece at the end sending out that email spiritually oh that yes I love that. so that way everybody knows of your new vibration you know because sometimes yeah. I'm you've had it where you meet someone else and they don't know quite how to respond to you you're just different and so yeah yeah delightful Sarah says much gratitude, feeling very blessed and peaceful. Oh, good, Cindy. Awesome. Thank you. Good. All right. Um, I know we've we're at our time, but any any last words of wisdom for us? And of course, if people would like to work with you, the the workshop is coming up in May, May 18th. And of course, people can work one on one with you as well. So check out the packages. I'm going to do, be doing a personal session myself. I don't know what's happening in May, to be honest. It's <laughs> like, so and I can't wait that long for the workshop so I'm going to start with the personal session oops perfect so on everyone right, so your inner child is ahead. waiting you know to connect with you right but they just want to be seen and heard and loved by you and that you know you truly are your own inner healer and by doing this work you're going to develop more self-love and what I've seen over and over again is that all these other physical things in your life right anything that's happening in the 3d world just starts to change Right. So whether it's your relationships or your physical health or all of that, you could think of it all as side effects of you healing your heart. So I encourage each and every one of you to do one of the activities that I suggested. And I would be honored to work with any of you that resonated with me. Absolutely. And like, you know, like you just said, it's about change and transformation in your reality, right? That's that is what you want. Uh Brenda says, I became so hot, had to splash cold water onto my shoulders and back so moving thank you good awesome glad you could make it today Brenda. and and that's the thing it's like you know we do all this inner work we do all these healing processes etc so that we can have transformation and change in our reality and um you know sometimes it takes a while sometimes you've got to do a, a mixture of different things and it's like, you know, people always say, well, how much healing work do I have to do? Well, you keep healing until you, you get the change that you want, right? So sometimes we do get tired of doing the work and you talked about doing, doing, doing. So sometimes you really just have to take a break, right? And yeah. just live as well. So we are here to live and experience life as well. But um, definitely we all have a lot of wounds that we experienced in our childhood, picked up in our childhood that, you know, I mean, I'm 57, I think, and uh, I still have some. <laughs> there's still there's still some remnants sticking around that need to be healed, right? So, um, yeah, so I still need to continue doing some of the work for myself. So it is what it is. So the, it comes down to do you want change or do you not, right? And so uh, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not, but it is about doing the continuing to doing the work and living life at the same time. And so our inner child wants us to play, wants us to have fun, wants us to laugh and sing and blow bubbles, right? Um, so do that as well as as you do the the inner work. Yeah, and so right? it comes from just opening up that channel, right? If you've ever seen a child get hurt and then the moment they're able to laugh, it's like they don't even remember that they got a cut, right? Their whole inner yeah. has changed. So I always encourage play if you were to ask me, do I do this or do that? If play is on the option, I say, go play, go play. So. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> and um, so, yes, yeah, so the, the replay will be out in a, in a little while, of course. Um, so stay tuned for that and uh, go back and watch or listen again. <clears throat> and of course, if you can, please do work with Jennifer. Um, Audrey says, thank you. This was awesome. I recalled making mud pies outside with my best friend at the time. Oh, nice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've always heard about people making mud pies, but I never actually knew of anybody who actually made mud pies. So that is so cool. Thank you. All right, everyone. So until next time, we may have a show on Thursday or Friday. I have to see. We'll see. So stay tuned for the 
for the emails, okay? Um, as long as everything is working properly, okay? So stay tuned for that. Until next time, may continue to be blessed with an abundance of joy, peace, love, happiness, prosperity, and radiant health. Sending you all so much love and blessings. So much love and blessings. <clears throat> I can't talk. Um, thank you so much, Jennifer. This was awesome. I loved it. I'm definitely going to be working with you just because sometimes I need that, that extra support for myself. And I know that there's some changes that I would like uh, to make in my life and heal some of those wounds from the past that are still still there a little bit. So I'll, I'll be reaching out. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Much love and blessings. Bye for now. <clears throat>